Hi, this is Thomas with Believe in the Run. This is Megan with Believe in the Run. And today we are talking about the shoe that we just finished the New York City Marathon in. And I say finish because we didn't race it. No, but we had a lot of fun. Well, I had a lot of fun out there and we both wore the New Balance SC Elite V4. You're gonna see this in an all white colorway that we're showing you. This is not the model they're releasing to the public. It's gonna be colored. This was the proto. It's pretty much the same shoe. It's just all white. All right, so Thomas, we were not the biggest fans of the SC Elite V3. It was a great shoe. It just didn't have those race day vibes. It felt more like a comfortable trainer. It just didn't have that bounce and that pop that you want from race day. It had that nice cush, it has a nice foam. I think it was really accessible to a lot of people who wanted to wear a race day carbon plated shoe, but maybe didn't need something that was as aggressive as say like a Vaporfly or even the Pro 3 from Adidas. It was definitely like the squishiest, softest, widest version of a race day shoe, I think that was available at the time. But so we have been very excited about V4, primarily because of this midsole update, but there's a lot happening here, so. Let's get into let's it. Let's get into it. All right, so Meg, let's start with this upper. What are they calling this upper? So New Balance is calling this their Phantom Fit. It's a new upper um, design, which is much appreciated. You've probably heard Robbie's horror stories of the lacing here, doing some crazy stuff. I got some gnarly blisters around the ankle. Anyway, this update is quite, it quite goes, a treat. What it becomes is more like a traditional upper with regular eyelets instead of the looping uh, system that it had before. It's much easier to lock this down. It's much easier to get a nice secure fit with this upper. It's got a very well structured format to it and a more traditional heel collar. Yeah, I had no issues um, with the, the ankle and heel here like I did in the other one. There's not a ton of padding here, but it feels very comfortable. It also is quite a wide build for a race day shoe, so I felt like it accommodated my wider foot very well. The only negative I have to say here is this tongue is just kind of blah. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, what happened here? It feels like a piece of felt or something yeah. just slapped in there. It kind of almost feels like an afterthought. Not gusseted. It's not probably the most refined finished tongue. Yeah. It just feels like it was like left over. That would probably be my knock on the upper as well. Other than that, the upper fits really well. The lacing, I, I can't tell you how much, how happy I am on how that's been improved with this shoe. Yeah, don't even think I have to say it on here if you've watched any of our reviews, but obviously this colorway is freaking amazing. Like Thomas said, this is not gonna be the colorway you can get, but for us, it was a treat. All right, Thomas, let's talk about what is the most exciting thing in my opinion about this update, and that is this brand new fuel cell midsole that is 100% PIBA. People get confused because you hear the word PBAX and you hear the word PIBA, and you're like, what is PIBA? What is PBAX? They're the same thing. PBAX is like the Kleenex, and PIBA is like the tissue. When you're talking about a brand, PBAX is a brand, and even within that, there can be different formulations of PBAX. So you might see a PBAX in one shoe that has one characteristic and another and another that's different. So even if it says PBAX, it doesn't mean you're getting the same formulation in every shoe. This one has a PIBA midsole. And Meg, what do you think the characteristic of this is? It's so much bouncier than the previous iteration where I felt like your foot really sank in and then it kind of like popped back up. This one, it feels like you get that sink in, bounce right back and paired with this carbon fiber plate, it's like, it's what you want on race day. It's a bouncy, fun ride. Energy return yeah. is the major thing for me. The previous version was a TPU based foam. And while it's nice, bouncy and airy, it didn't have that oomph off the toe. Where this one, you get that bounce. And I really like the way they did the rocker on this and how the toe off feels. It's a much more aggressive feeling 
New Balance race day shoe than you're used to. Definitely, I agree with the forefoot here. It's it's stiffer and it just gives you a little bit more of that pop that you want, whereas the previous version, it kind of lacked that, that propulsive feeling in the toe off. You have a full length carbon fiber plate here. It's been slightly redesigned so that it's a little bit more poppy and bouncy like we were talking about. It's also, I believe, a little bit lighter than the previous one. And then this energy arc, which is, how do you explain what that is? Energy arc is the shape of the plate. So New Balance has developed a plate that they feel like not only gives you forward propulsion, but also kind of like a spring like off, off impact. That's why you have this cavity here. It gives you that spread and then pop up. They're trying to maximize all the energy return out of the midsole that they can. While I didn't have my most successful run in New York, I don't blame the shoe, but I did a lot of workouts in these leading up to that and really enjoyed the workouts and found the shoe to be fun to get those faster paces with. You ran around a 320 in New York and you're on your feet for that time, which is longer than you're normally on your feet, how did the shoe feel for you? So I think one of the best things I can say about that is that I never once thought about my feet when I was racing in New York. Not only a fast feeling shoe, but it's also a good feeling shoe. So yes, I was out there for more than three hours, but my feet felt great the whole time. Now, New York, I totally, just tried to finish, so I was on my feet for a long time. I was having, like I said, some respiratory problems where I was coughing up and couldn't continue to run, but I wanted to finish because it was a milestone marathon for me, so I stayed out there and I was actually on my feet for over five hours in this shoe. Sometimes you're looking for speed, sometimes you're looking for comfort. This shoe provided me speed in the workouts I had leading up to New York, but on that day where I had to kind of grind through and just grip my way through a tough marathon, I was on my feet for a long time and the shoe and the comfort of the foam, because I wasn't putting that much effort into racing that day, my body held up pretty well and I have to thank the shoes for pretty much saving my legs during that kind of like trudge. Um, the other thing we haven't talked about yet here is the outsole. So there's actually quite a substantial amount of of rubber here on the outsole. So I didn't have any issues with traction or turns or anything like that. I don't know that I ran in this shoe when it's been raining or wet out. Um, you have, because when you're running New York, true, it, true, you're true. running through these water stops for about a quarter mile, you're getting a mixture of Gatorade and water underneath That's this true, shoe. I didn't think about that. And I had no issues out there. So I'll say that the, that the rubber coverage is, it, it does well. The other thing we have to talk about here is the weight. Um, my women's seven and a half came in at seven ounces or 198 grams. That's definitely on the heavier side for race day shoes. The good news is it really didn't bother me. Um, it's not something I thought about out there running, but it is definitely on the heavier side for race day. Yeah, I didn't want to weigh these before I went out. And I have to say during my workouts and stuff, the shoe didn't feel heavy and it actually felt lively underfoot. So I was fine not weighing it before running and I, I really didn't want to know going into the marathon because I knew it might be a little heavier than some of the race days I'm used to running in. And at a 10 and a half, this one weighs over nine ounces, which is heavy. Yeah. When you get into race day, like Alpha Fly weighs less than that for a size 10 and a half. And that's 263 grams in case you're doing the metric system. It's not, a light shoe, but I feel like the return of the midsole, that Piba foam, mm -hmm. gave you enough balance to sort of mitigate, it, mitigate it. it, but I, w I would say that, I, I mean, besides having a new tongue in here, we gotta find a way to lighten this baby up. There's still a four millimeter drop, which is what was in the SC3. So you have 40 millimeters in the heel, 36 in the forefoot. So plenty of cushioning underfoot. It's maybe slightly heavier than you're used to for race day, but not anything that and would deter me from getting a pair. Even though it's heavier than the previous version, I think this is a much better shoe 1, than the SC3. I would still take this any day over that. So again, I'm gonna bring up the fact that I totally bombed and stunk up New York City. I have over 60 miles in these shoes when we're doing this review, Meg. I really think this is a great update from New Balance in their race collection. And I think it's a shoe that's gonna accommodate a lot more people than maybe some of the more niche race day shoes. Like we were saying, it's a little bit more accommodating. It's comfortable, but it's also fast. I think a lot of people will, will love this shoe for race day. Thomas, what are you gonna give this? I give it a green, May. Yeah, I'm definitely giving this one a green. 
I mean, they kind of sold me with the aesthetics here, the all white, the Piva midsole. I mean, it's a, it's a really good, fun race day shoe. I feel like this shoe is gonna work for someone who is maybe, you know, they're unsure like, hey, do I go with a super shoe? Do I go with a plated shoe? You know, am I in that range of like speed? And I think this one will convince people to try speed shoes, to try running a little bit more excitement on race day, having that excitement of having a plated racer, this would be the shoe. And I think it's gonna hold up really well, considering that I have 60 miles on this shoe, it looks a little beat up, but if you can see what New York City streets do over the course of a marathon to a running shoe, <laughs> this one's holding up pretty well for 60 miles. So if you want to pick up a pair of the SC Elite V4, it is coming out globally on February 1st, and it will be $250. We hope you enjoyed this review. If you haven't yet, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find us on Instagram. We have Facebook. I don't know if people are still over there. Uh, a Strava group, we'll go and give you kudos. And uh, where else can people find us? Uh, we have a weekly podcast, did you mention that? I didn't. What about our email that they could subscribe to? Yeah, that's probably the most important thing is if you haven't yet, go subscribe to our newsletter. It comes out every Friday. It's called The Drop, like our podcast, and you get all of the content that we put out that week, plus a funny little thing written by Robbie. Yep, so check it out, funny little thing. Sometimes they're not funny, sometimes they're serious, but they're entertaining. Every once in a while you get a real downer in there, but <laughs> I like to give them the benefit of the doubt. No, it's, I think they're still entertaining. But anyway, check it out. That is probably the best way to find out what we're up to and everything that's going on. We hope to see you this winter for Winter Grit. If this is coming out in January, coming you're out already birthday. doing it. Wish so, me a happy birthday because this is January 8th yeah. when this comes out. Do that. Give a double tap. Give her a love for, for her birthday. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.